Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Penny and this is Little by Little. Before we get started on today's tutorial, I just wanted to take a minute and talk about the wildfires that are happening right now. I know that there's such devastation and loss in Maui as well as here in my own country. I sometimes feel like my entire country is on fire. Um, we've got so many wildfires in British Columbia, in Northern Alberta, the Northwest Territories, even into Saskatchewan. And so if you have been affected by any of those fires, know that I'm thinking about you and I hope you're safe and taking all the precautions that you need to, to be safe. I also wanted to take a second to talk about the hurricane that's come in. I know that there's been a lot of devastating loss in Mexico and it's now up into the southern part of California. And then I heard today that you also had an earthquake on top of that. So my goodness, mother nature at her worst. Again, I hope you're safe and uh, know that I'm thinking about you. Okay, now that I've got that off my chest, in today's video, we're going to be making a very simple, easy reading chair and ottoman for the study. I have put the cutting instructions in the description box below that you can follow along with, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Let's get started. To get started, I've drawn out on grid paper the shape I want for the back of the chair. The template measures 74 millimeters from the top to the bottom, 58 across the bottom edge, and 70 millimeters across the widest point. I'll cut out the template and use it to trace out the shape on my foam board. Here's the cut piece. You can see that I've doubled up the foam board. The extra thickness not only brings it closer in scale, but it also makes the piece much sturdier. After cutting it out, I went over the edges with some light grain sandpaper so that it was nice and smooth and even. Next, I cut out the base of the chair, which is 62 millimeters by 45 millimeters. The chair seat, which is 44 and a half millimeters by 42 millimeters, and that will sit on top of the base. Lastly, I've cut two pieces at 43 millimeters by 20 millimeters, which I'll use for the arms. For each of these arms, I've actually dug out a bit of a trench using my craft knife. I've cut down at an angle towards the middle about three or four millimeters from each side so that there's a V shape along one side. I'll explain why I did that in just a moment. The chair will go together like this. I cut two pieces of round wooden dowel. This dowel is 10 millimeters in diameter and each piece is 43 millimeters long. These pieces will sit in that V-shaped groove and finish off the arms of the chair. These are the main pieces of the chair. We'll still need to make some legs, but we'll get to that a bit later. You'll need something for padding so that the chair looks nice and comfortable. I'm using this quilt batting because I like how soft it is, but you could also use cotton pads, felt, or basically any other kind of fabric. We're going to add the padding to the upper part of the chair back. We'll go up and around the arm of the chairs. And of course the seat itself. We don't need to add any padding on the base of the chair. I've cut out two pieces for the chair back. One is the same size as the back and the other one is slightly smaller. I've left about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters all the way around on the smaller piece. You don't need to put any batting on the lower part of the chair because it will sit behind the base and the seat and you won't need it here. 
I've done the same thing for the chair seat, cutting two pieces. One is the same size as the seat and the other one is slightly smaller. I'm only using one layer for the arms. I've cut it the same width, but as you can see, I've cut it longer than necessary. Once I glue it on, I can trim the excess away. I'm going to use this Fabri-Tac glue to attach the batting. It's specifically designed for fabrics, and if you spread it out, it doesn't leak through fabrics like some other glues do. I'm applying a little bit of glue around the edges, and then just a small amount through the middle of the foam board. I'll use a glue spreader here just to spread it out over the whole surface. I'll do the same for the second piece, but I'm not going to go all the way out to the edge. Remember this piece is a bit smaller than the other one. So there's our first piece. I'm going to do the same process on the back of the chair next. For the sides, I'll start on one half, add my wood dowel, and then start bringing the batting up and over the other side. I made a mistake here that I had to go back and fix. I took the fabric all the way down to the bottom of the second side, which caused me some issues. It adds too much bulk and the chair didn't quite fit right. So I had to go back and trim off a bit of that fabric. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. I ended up cutting off just enough on one side to make room for the height of the base and seat together. That's going to fit together so much better. This is the fabric that I've chosen for the chair. I figured with so much dark brown furniture in the room that it needed just a little bit of color. Sometimes using a fabric with a pattern on it adds a little bit of extra challenge so that the pattern lines up, but it shouldn't be too difficult. I just need to give a little bit more attention to where I'm cutting the fabric and to where I'm gluing it onto the piece. I've cut a piece of fabric for each of the chair pieces, as well as an extra piece for the back of the back. More on that in a couple minutes. I try and cut out a little bit more than I need, and then I just trim off any excess later. I'm going to start with the chair back again. And so I'll just show you by putting the fabric over top that this is kind of the look that I'm going for at the end of the day. So it'll be a little bit puffier on the top and then it'll be a little bit tighter on that piece that is hidden behind the chair. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of the Fabrifix glue onto the chair itself and then you'll want to glue that to the back side of the fabric. Make sure your lines are going the direction that you want them to and that you've centered your piece where you want it on the fabric. Then place the glued side down. You can use your fingers to spread the fabric out nice and flat. I've cut out this little piece of chipboard using the same template 
and I'm going to make sure that when I glue it onto the fabric that the lines in the fabric are in the same spot as they are on the front of the back of the chair. I'm going to wrap each of the rest of the pieces, but you can ignore these little guys here. I ended up not using them. For the back piece, I trimmed off most of the excess and then pulled it back around the sides and attached it onto the back. This is that extra piece and I've wrapped it around the same as the first one, but now this is going to cover all of that mess on the back of the chair. I've wrapped each of the remaining pieces much like a Christmas present, but again I want to make sure that I'm lining up the pattern in the fabric so that it all matches the chair back. Don't worry about what the front of these chair arms looks like. We'll be covering that up with more fabric. I cut a strip of fabric the same width as the arm and rounded it off on just one end. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach it to the arm. I'm taking a small amount of that fabric under the bottom edge just so that there's no unfinished edge here. This finishes off the front edge really nicely. It's time to put all these pieces together and build the chair. I'll start by attaching the seat to the base. I want to make sure that those two lines in the fabric match up. Next I'm going to add the two side arms, so we'll put some glue in this L-shaped area here. Make sure the finished edge of the arm is facing forward, and then you're just going to repeat the same process on the other side. I'll add the back piece on next. I'm going to add some glue here onto the back part of the base arms and the seat. Give this a nice firm press here. And now we'll add that last back piece to cover up all of those folds in the fabric. Make sure you squeeze those two pieces nice and tight together. It's time now for the chair legs. I've cut off these pieces from four barbecue skewers. I cut off a few millimeters off of the pointy part and then cut off 25 millimeter lengths. The skewers are already nicely tapered, so it'll be easy to push them into the bottom of the chair. 
I want to paint these legs before I install them so that I don't get any paint on the fabric. I love these little clips for jobs like this. You only need to paint a portion of the legs. 19 millimeters of this stick will be part of the leg and the other six millimeters will be hidden up inside of the chair. So don't worry about painting the pointy end. You can see where I've marked off the six millimeter mark here. Under the bottom of the chair, I've measured in about 10 millimeters from the front of the chair and 10 millimeters from each side. I'm using my embossing tool, which has a fairly thick base, to make the holes just a little bit bigger. On the back side of the chair, we're still coming in 10 millimeters from the side, but only about 5 millimeters from the back of the base. I realized that those holes weren't quite big enough, so I'm going to take my scribe tool and just make them a little bit bigger. Now they fit much better. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in the hole and then stick the legs in. That'll keep them from falling out. Now that I've got all four legs in, I'm just pushing them out on an angle just a tiny bit, just for stability in the chair. It's a bit wobbly, so I need to adjust one of the legs before the glue sets. There, that's better. Oops, I see I missed painting the bottoms of these two legs. Luckily, that's an easy fix. I like this little chair, but I feel like it would be so much better with a matching ottoman. I've cut two pieces of the doubled up foam board. These are the same size as the chair seat. I've also cut out some matching fabric, making sure that I can match that center line. I'll add some of the quilt batting to just one of these pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and trace out two pieces using the foam board as a guide. I'm going to cut out both of these pieces and then I'm going to trim down one of them so that it's a little bit smaller. So one piece is the same size as the board and I'm going to cut off about a quarter of an inch off of two sides of the other one. That'll give me about an eighth of an inch all the way around on the smaller one. 
I've glued this on just like I did on the original seat. And now that the padding is added, I'll wrap the pieces the same way as I wrapped the original seat and base pieces. I'm making sure that I line that piece up on the fabric so that that center line matches the same lines in the chair. Now that they're both wrapped, we just need to glue them together. I'm going to add legs to the bottom just like I did on the chair. And now we have a matching ottoman. And that finishes the chair for the study. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial, and I hope to see you all again soon in the next one. Bye for now.